Welcome to the iROM Model Builder tutorial series. In this video we show how to run transient simulations in the iROM Model Builder software. Transient simulations analyze the electromechanical response in the time domain. Let's start with the accelerometer model described in previous tutorials. In a first simulation run, we want to analyze the transient behavior when acceleration loads are applied. Click on Loads and Constraints. Activate mechanical loads and select acceleration loads. Select UY to assign lateral accelerations in the Y direction. With transient simulations you can choose between four different load functions, sine, step, pulse, and ramp. In case of a pulse function, the DC value defines the signal offset. The AC value defines the signal change between low and high. The first time related parameter the pulse length and the second one the time of the high signal. Appropriate values for acceleration loads are usually extracted in previous static simulations. In the given example, the nominal acceleration is set to a value that leads to about 7 micrometer displacements, and the pulse length is 5 times of the period of oscillations. Both parameters were defined before the transient analysis. In order to achieve a short settling time, the damping ratio of sensors is usually set to 0.7. In transient simulations, damping can be specified either by the Rayleigh damping approach or by the modal damping approach. A damping ratio of 0.7 is used here for all modes. Then, Click the simulate icon and select transient analysis. Enter the total simulation time, which corresponds to twice the pulse length. Next, you need to specify the time step size for the numerical solver. The time step size should be at least 20 times smaller than the response period. Click on simulate and plot displacements in the y direction. A small transient overshoot can be seen, as known from theory. The transient overshoot disappears, when the damping ratio is set to 1. This is known as critical damping and defines the boundary between overdamped and underdamped systems. If the damping ratio is set to smaller values, typical oscillations can be observed. In the next example, the damping ratio is set to 0.1. The acceleration load is reduced to 60%, and the pulse length is increased by a factor of 4. Now adjust the simulation time as well. At this point, the typical oscillations can be seen. Let's go back to the example with optimal damping. The simulation settings are now obtained from a file. The upper and lower capacitances are activated by the CON command, and bias voltages of plus 10 and minus 10 volts are applied to the fixed conductor ports. Start the transient simulation and plot the results. The displacements are identical to the previous simulation. Due to the large displacement amplitudes, clear asymmetries can be seen in the capacitance change. The capacitance change of the lower capacitor is much larger as the capacitance change of the upper one. The electrical current on both conductors is also different. In practice, therefore, amplitudes are set to much smaller values. In a next step, we will demonstrate our Simulink interface. 
click the Simulink export icon. All model elements, including simulation settings and the specified plot data are automatically transferred to Simulink. Start the transient simulations and compare the results. In Simulink, you can apply any stimulus function and evaluate arbitrary result data. Here, the difference between the upper and lower capacitance is calculated and transferred to a new output scope. The difference in capacitances is proportional to the displacement functions and is evaluated in the electronic circuits. In the next video, we demonstrate the modeling of the contact behavior at travel stoppers in the time domain. I hope you enjoyed this video.